Are you wandering in the wilderness? Or are you a voice in the wilderness? Welcome to the Revival Cry Podcast. This is your host, Eric Miller. Isaiah 40 verse 3 says, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. The goal of this podcast is to encourage you to use the voice God has given you to make Jesus famous. Every week, we will share principles from the Word of God, interviews, and encouragement in order to strengthen your voice. Thank you for joining me today. And now here is today's podcast. Today, we will answer the question, what does a mature man's thought life look like? Hmm. That's a question. This is based, of course, on 1 Corinthians 13, 11. And to give us the answer and also his insights on Scripture, please welcome from Fire School of Ministry, Pastor Eric Miller. Pastor, good morning. Good morning. It's great to be back with you all. Mm. Great to see you. You look fresh. <laughs> fresh. I feel a lot fresher than last week. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I like the shirt, though. Oh, Messiah thank you. University. Messiah University. It's where my son's going to school there. Oh. oh. So, so it's a real institution. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's actually in uh, south of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Wow. Mm. I know of the Master's University where John MacArthur right. is leading. But yeah. Um, Messiah. Messiah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great name. So, Pastor, um, give us the answer to the question. What does a man, a mature man's thought life look like? Well, I'll... I'll read that scripture today, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. It says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. Mm. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish, childish things. Mm. So I think what Paul is saying here is that there was a time when my vocabulary was very limited. Mm -hmm when my experience was very limited and so i only responded to what i understood mm. right but now that i've grown up and matured in my relationship with the lord i have a responsibility to not speak as a child anymore mm. to not say well i don't understand because now i feel conviction Mm. Now I, I might understand what is right and what's wrong. And so I think in order to be a great man or woman of God, mm. it's what we do in our secret life. It's what we do in our thought life. It's what we do with our attitude and our character. Have we allowed Christ to transform us to look more like him? Mm. Mm. I know in uh, 1 Corinthians four fifteen through 16, this is a scripture the Lord gave me right before we went to the Pensacola Revival, mm. or actually when I was there, I had just come out of getting freedom from all kinds of lust and, you know, just garbage. My mind was just full of just perverse things. And, and when I got radically set free from that in August of 97, mm. I had this great deliverance, mm. but I had to learn how to walk with the Lord. Mm. And when I went to the Pensacola Revival, I walked in one day and I had never like heard God so clear before. I just heard the Lord say, read 1 Timothy 4, 15 and 16. Like mm. that. So immediately, service hadn't even started. I'm just standing there and I just hear that echo, you know. And I'll read it here. Paul says to Timothy, be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly, entirely to them, so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And then I heard the Lord say, I want you to go to the Brownsville School of Ministry here. And that was not on Eric's radar <laughs> mm. to go back to school. I didn't really like school much, mm. but I knew it was the Lord. And going for the next two and a half years, it was really another probably five years after I was a youth pastor where I got free that God was renewing my mind mm. before I was back in like full-time ministry. 
And I know that the main thing the Lord did in my heart was renew my mind, was strengthen me to be diligent, to give myself over to the Lord mm. so that my progress of what God is doing on the inside of me would be evident to those around me. Because nobody knows what's going on the inside of you if we're not walking in the Lord mm you know, in secret. But when that begins to manifest in the fruit of the spirit mm. of our life, I think it, it, that's where Paul says, watch your life and your doctrine closely. What you believe is important. Mm -hmm. What you do with what you believe is important. And if you persevere in them, you're going to save not only yourself, but those around you. Mm. Those around you will see their need for the Lord because they'll see your life as a testimony. Mm. So I, I think, you know, whatsoever a man thinks in his heart, mm. so is he. You know, if I want to say I'm a Christian or I'm a disciple of Jesus, then what evidence is that? You know, I could tell you that here and on the radio, but nobody knows my secret life. Mm. Mm. But if I have fruits that are worthy of repentance, if I have a testimony that's consistent jesus said that's how you'll know who are mine mm -mm. and so i i think to be a man of god to be a woman of god means we have to let the lord renew our minds we have to let the lord help us to establish strong foundations in his word mm -hmm. in the prayer room Mm -hmm. in the secret place and simple obedience mm -hmm. faithfulness on a regular basis yeah this is something that's it's very important for us as uh, god's children those who call themselves christians identify right. themselves who has a relationship with christ to really consider seriously because um our thought life does not uh, really um show itself obviously and uh, we can only be judged according to the fruits that we bear right. in, mm. in life. And these are not uh, good works fruits, but uh, fruit of the Spirit, if we go to the writings of Paul in Galatians. You know, right. Pastor, I think that's what I'm getting uh, from your sharing, that uh, we cannot fake it, um, right. what we have in mind. And uh, I was trying to look for that verse when he said, uh, I think it's somewhere in chapter 5, that those who have their mindset on what the Spirit desires, um, is uh, what's really happening in their life. You right. know, it, it will manifest. But those whose minds are set on the lustful desires, the, the lust of the flesh, you know, it will also manifest in their lives. Right. So it's easy to, to act as if you are a Christian. Right. But what really is inside your heart will eventually surface and manifest. And that is uh, seen in your fruit. Um, yeah. The fruit of the Spirit you know, so how can we um, reach that level of maturity, Pastor? Practical steps for yeah. those who are stuck in this uh, <laughs> lifestyle, leading a double life. That is sure. You know, there was a time here. I'm going to make a confession today. <laughs> <laughs> that it, it, well, actually, it's funny because yesterday at Fire School Ministry, we there was a, a gathering of a group called Spin Media, mm -hmm. and they were reaching out in the community, connecting with people. Just a wonderful ministry in the Philippines here, mm. and they had different dignitaries come. And one of the men who was there, I can't remember his name, but he was the head of uh, the police force of, I guess, for public transportation here mm. uh, in Davao mm. mm. traffic. Mm. Uh, and so he was just sharing, you know, um, how we as Christians should uh, drive well and, and understand the rules and stuff. And, you oh. know, I'm convicted, you know, with that because sometimes I haven't always done that correctly. He's my neighbor. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but he was – and we were laughing and stuff and he was talking. But it, it brought me back to an issue when I was a missionary first here in the vows a long time ago mm. that I was driving I turned right at a traffic light uh oh and there was I didn't think there was any sign uh. and so I did that and then the traffic cop you know brrr, you know pulled me over mm. said sir you know you can't turn here you know the sign says here and I said well I didn't see a sign and I felt myself getting aggressive mm. and then the lord said keep your mouth shut and honor his authority mm. And 
I thought, what is this rising up? You know, here I am, the missionary, right? <laughs> Supposed to be a yeah. great man of God. Mm. And yet the Lord was dealing with that area of my life. And when I drove away, I felt so convicted. I went to SM and I bought the man a, a gift card. <laughs> And I came back and I gave it to him. I said, look, I didn't honor you the way that I should have. And I greatly appreciate who you are and what you do on a regular basis. Because honestly, you being out here in the hot sun and, you know, and I mm. went with it. And so what does that mean? How does that help us to grow and mature? Well, when we take responsibility mm. for what is coming out of us and we deal with it right away mm. like if i have a sinful thought if i say something wrong if i have an attitude i repent of it quickly and then i do something about it if i can mm. you know i i make a change i make sure that i am valuing what the lord is doing in me by releasing his character what jesus would do in that right. situation mm -hmm. yeah and this is an intentional move right and uh, still coming from paul do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed yes by the renewing of your minds yeah. and that's what uh, he's trying to tell us here in first corinthians 13 that when you were a child yeah that's uh excusable i mean right. you're a child yeah. you're not able to process difficult um things mature things that is but when you are all grown up bodily <laughs> right you're supposed to act that way uh, that's why today's episode is entitled man up and this mm. is not applicable only to men out right. there by gender mm. but to all of us who are supposed to be mature in christ already because we've been attending the church for <laughs> what five years ten years right. and uh, that's supposed to be a natural progress but mm. do you agree pastor that there are really those who do not do it intentionally i mean they are dependent on the pastor's feeding of the word and all yeah. they feel good about it for a moment and then once their character is tested just like situations like that out in the road and then uh, being pulled over by <laughs> right. authority and it would justify their mistake because they don't want to take responsibility of that oh yeah you know as a missionary we want to come back with all these amazing stories for right. people when we go to the states which i just came back from mm -hmm. and tell them all you know how people got saved out of mm -hmm. all these amazing things but a lot of my testimonies and i've seen some the lord do some incredible things in people's mm -hmm. lives but a lot of it's been like what god's done in my heart to change mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. yeah. and it's brought about i think not only the change in me but the but the understanding of the word of mm. what I'm supposed to share in different places to challenge people to go deeper, mm. you know, that there's more, mm. you know, God is so big and yes, he lives on the inside of you, but I don't know that we access everything in the Lord until we humbly accept his lordship over every area of our lives. Mm. And it just seems like the more that we grow closer to him, it's not that he wasn't He's, he was less in our lives before than he is now. Mm -mm. It's that we're recognizing his authority, mm. his you know love, his care for us in every situation in life. So we need to invite Jesus into every area of our right. life, mm. not just where it's comfortable for us, like at church. Mm -mm. Right. When it mm. becomes personable, then I invite him when I go to the grocery store, mm. yes. when I go to the basketball game, when mm. I go, whatever I do, and Jesus guides my thoughts, mm. and he refreshes me, and I become an encouragement to those around me, mm -mm. not because I'm greater than anybody else, but simply because I'm humbling myself and saying, Lord, please, I want everything that you have i want you to have your way in my life mm. and infiltrate my marriage you yeah. know my kids lives you know mm -hmm. when i'm on the radio or whatever we're doing it, it's all about you mm -hmm. yeah. amen pastor you mentioned a while ago about the secret life yeah and since you've been walking with the lord and the lord for sure has matured you from those childish ways what was perhaps one childish way that was in your secret life mm. that the Lord continuously had to sharpen. Yeah. 
you know, one of the things that was unique is, again, during the Pensacola Revival, there was, it was such a formidable time in my life, you know, where the cement was poured and it had to harden, you know, the foundation. And I would go, we would have classes. This would be the daily schedule, you know, four days a week that I would work like 5.30 a.m. to like maybe 9, 9, 9.30. And then I would come back, get cleaned up, and then I'd go to prayer at the school from mm. like 11 to 12. Mm. Then from 12 to 4.30 were classes, Brownsville School Ministry mm. classes. Then you go home, and then you go get in line at church because – there were so many people in line. There's been people standing in line since 9 a.m., 6 a.m., uh. all day long just waiting to get in because they came from all over the world. And, I mean, there'd be 100 nations represented in one mm. meeting. Mm. And so you had to get in line, and then you go into service, and the doors would open at 6 p.m., and then 7 p.m. start. And then we wouldn't leave till like, 11, 12 p.m. at night. Ooh. And, I mean, that was a daily routine. So one of the days that I went to pray before prayer at the school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was in my car and Steve Hill was the evangelist and I would listen to Steve and just be like wow I want what that guy has you know I saw him his marriage and his kid you know how he loved the Lord his passion all these things and so I really valued him I learned a lot from him but one day I'm in the place of prayer and the Lord said you will never be Steve Hill <laughs> what? And I knew exactly what that meant. Mm. You know, that, okay, value certain people, but learn how to apply it into your life. Mm. Learn how to be the unique individual that I've made you to be. So what you do with me in the secret place won't, it might, the principles might be the same of what other people do, but it'll be mm. uniquely different because mm. of your experience, your personality, mm. um, all the things that God is leading you in. So if we let the Lord change us, then we will have a uniqueness in what we do. And I think it'll we can practically apply it in a way that will encourage people to know that in your situation, you don't have to copy and paste who I am. Mm. Ah. You can actually hear from the Lord mm. and apply in those little details of your life so you can walk in freedom. Mm. You know, in peace and and see, have courage to be a witness yeah. for the Lord. Mm -hmm. you know? And that is exactly what Paul did here. When he became a man, he said, I gave up childish ways. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, in consistency with what you said, that you acknowledge that uh, you have to give up everything. I mean, you right. lack in this area and then you have to surrender it to the Lord and take responsibility of your immaturity right and then just invite god to make you grow in the areas where you need to grow mm. yeah and uh, a lot of uh, people do not understand that and th that's part of the reasons why they don't grow because they don't have a clear perspective or understanding of their current spiritual situation that they need to grow up yeah. and uh, they are lacking in this area and some men also fear responsibility mm. and that is why they remain as a child childish yeah. in their ways you know and that's a very common trait amongst children that mm. they don't want to take responsibility of their actions they just want to be spontaneous and reckless and when they commit mistakes they would always deny it. I did not do it, Mom. No responsibility. <laughs> right. It was him. It was that kid. Yeah. No accountability. No accountability. Mm. And that is a reflection of what a childish. Yeah. Pastor, that is a crisis nowadays in our modern society where yeah. men have to really stand up and take responsibility of their failures in the way they manage their families. Pastors who are irresponsible in managing the church and when they are exposed they yeah. would put the blame on others right mm. what's your encouragement to them as a starting point that you know this is what you need to do so that you can get it right yeah sure i mean the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom mm. yes a good understanding of those who do his covenant mm. how do you do a covenant with god well it starts with you recognizing he's god and you're not mm. And not make the ministry, not make the business, not make everything all about you. You are not the center of attention. Mm. You're not the center of the universe. Mm. You know, It doesn't all revolve around you. But mm. yet when Jesus becomes that center point for us 
and we hear his voice and we walk in obedience and honor, then I believe we'll see the power of God. We'll see testimonies. Mm -hmm. We'll see the Lord break through and do things in response to our love for him Mm -hmm. where he will reveal himself. And, And then when you see God taking over your life, and revealing himself in the simplicity of who you are. Mm. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're not going to be the next Billy Graham, okay? Maybe yeah. you're not going to be the next, you know, great singer or dancer or whatever. Mm. Mm. But, you know, whoever you are, if you're satisfied with Jesus, it's going to it's going to manifest. Mm-hmm. Right. And and then to me that's what ministry is. Ministry mm-hmm. is just the overflow of your relationship with God. Mm-hmm. It's not It's not something that one day we just really mature into and become this superhero, you Mm. know? We got to get rid of the superhero mentality Mm. because we keep seeing people fall. We keep seeing people, uh, you know, backslide or whatever you want to call it. Mm. Some didn't front slide in the first place. but (laughs) Or side slide even. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, it's scary to me that that keeps happening. And how can we stop it? I think it boils down... To our relationship with the Lord mm. and Him just using our testimony mm. that He's real to us. Mm. I'm not talking about somebody I don't know. Mm. You know, this is somebody yeah. I'm with every day. Mm. Amen. Know, guides my life, my thought. Mm. You know, Pastor, I know that um, you also noticed in yourself that you grew yeah. in your relationship with God and even how you relate with people because you've been in the ministry for many years. Mm. Now, there are people who wants to take a shortcut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do things quickly and, and easily like, uh, you know, there's a, a a quick course for all of this. Now, um, what is your encouragement to them? Because I know that they want to go fast, but right. they, they cannot do that because then they really have to go through the motions. So what is your encouragement for them who wants to fast track everything? (laughs) (laughs) You know, we tell the students at fire school ministry all the time, you know, they're there for two years and then usually about four to six months of an internship. Mm. And I said, just because you graduate from here doesn't make you this great mature man of God. Mm -hmm. What matters is we want you to know Jesus deeper. Mm. And we want you to allow him to lead your life. Stop kicking open doors. Let God open doors for Mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You know, learn about your gift, your talents, your skills, your identity, your Mm -hmm. calling. Mm -hmm. And grow in that. It's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. When you see somebody on a platform who's been doing this for 30, 40, 50 years, you know, uh, that doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. You know, their marriage, their kids maturing. You know, Dr. Brown actually put something on his Facebook the other day. He said, and I think he said it was like 50 or 52 years of ministry. Mm, he wow. said, God has never once asked my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that because it's so true. Yeah. He's the God of all creation. Mm. You know, and the fact that we have the honor to just serve him, to yeah. love him and do whatever he asks us to do i mean we don't do it as slaves we do it as sons and daughters Mm -hmm. and what an honor but if you know we think we're the you know greatest thing since sliced bread Mm -hmm. you know we're (laughs) we're 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 gonna watch the lord put us on the bench Mm. And it's not because he doesn't love us. To the contrary, he loves us so deeply, mm. he doesn't want us to make a fool of ourselves yeah. or of him and his kingdom. Yes. Mm. <laughs> and so it is what it is. <laughs> we'll take love our that. commands from him because he is our commander. Amen. Right. <laughs> he's the commander. He's the master. Yeah. Mm. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for your insights this morning. Absolutely. We learned a lot. Uh, please invite our listeners for upcoming events in Fire School of Ministry or ministries you're Yeah, involved sure. Yeah, in. sure. Um, Please check out, we are taking in students soon for our next semester starting in January, the third week of January. Mm. So if you're interested to come to Fire School Ministry here in Davao City, please check us out on Facebook. You can look at our page, uh, simply Fire School Ministry Philippines, Mm -hmm. and send us a message. We'd love to be able to help you grow in the Lord and experience all that God has for you. Mm. Wonderful. Well, Pastor Eric Miller of Fire School Ministry. Thank you so much, Pastor, for your time. We hope to see you again next Amen. time. You're Thank guesting. you.
Thank you for listening to Revival Cry with Eric Miller. Please subscribe, rate, and write a review for this podcast on iTunes, cpnshows.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. To find out more or partner with our missions work around the world, please visit us at revivalcry.org. I look forward to being with you next week.